Welcome to Whiskey's A Journey. My name is Peter Fasciano, and today's Monday, which means it's another peated scotch review. Today, we're taking a look at Kilhoman, the Loch Gorm edition. This is an Isla peated single malt scotch. It's coming in at 46% ABV, natural color, non-chill filtered. It says it right here on the label. This is the 2022 release. And in this batch, there were 17,250 bottles. Mine's a 750 milliliter bottle. I'm in Phoenix, Arizona. And at the time that I paid for this, it was basically a hundred bucks. It's $99.99 before taxes. And this is an exclusively Oloroso Sherry Cask matured whiskey. I don't know if there is an age to this, but I read somewhere that the very first release of this was five years old. I don't necessarily know if this one is five years old or if it has older whiskey in it or not. I'm not too sure. But the information that I did get said that this was a 22 Oloroso Sherry cask batch. And of those barrels, 20 of them were fresh Oloroso casks and the other two were refill casks. All right, so like always, let's pour it, nose it, taste it, talk about it a little bit. There's not a lot to talk about because it's a newer distillery. And then if you stick around until the very end, I'm gonna give this thing a score. So let's go ahead and get this thing on the nose and let you know what I think. All right, right up front, I get a dark raisin note. Typically the raisins, dates, figs, and plums are all there in a sherry or an Oloroso matured whiskey but this is really dark raisins. It almost reminds me a lot of the Tam Dew, the Tam Dew 15 and the Tam Dew batch 007 that I have. It's just very rich in raisin notes. It is peated and the peat that I'm getting is squarely right down the middle of a campfire smoke wet log note. And I'm sure by now you know, if you've been on this channel for a while, I get three types of peats, the Band-Aid and Iodine, the tarry kind of thing. Then right down the middle, I get an ashy log campfire. And then on the other side, I get savory smoked meats. This doesn't have the smoked meats or the Band-Aid and Iodine. It's campfire smoke, ashy. And a little bit of orange peel, chocolate, and tobacco. Smells really good. And the peat is a supporting note and it's not a dominant note. So if you're not into heavily peated whiskeys, I think this could be something that you might want to look at. Kind of like dip your toe in the peated realm for a little bit before you get smacked in the face with the Ardbegs and the Lafroigs and the Octomores. All right, let's go ahead and get it on the palate and see if what I'm getting on the nose is also coming through on the palate. Yeah, I get peat up front followed by a raisin note. The tobacco leaves a little bit of a bitterness, almost like a dark chocolate bitterness as well on the side of my tongue. It elevates in the sweetness as it goes from the mid palate to the finish and the finish is all ashy with a little bit of raisin sweetness. I do have to tell you, it has calmed down quite a bit from when I first got this bottle. I had it a couple of times right when I first purchased it and it came across as very hot, hotter than the 46%. And I think it's been about six months since I've had this. And like, as I mentioned before, it's calmed down and it's rounded out a little bit, but hey, that was the first sip. Let's go ahead and get a second sip down. Let me concentrate a little bit more on the notes that I'm getting. Talk a little bit about the finish, add some water to it, talk a little bit about Kilhoman, and then give this thing a score. Second sip, here we go. On that second sip, more of the sherry notes are coming out. Now, instead of just getting the raisins, there are red fruits in there as well. Plums, the date note is coming through, and the fig is almost like an overripe fig when it's really mushy and it's lost a little bit of the sweetness, but it's, it's, it's fig. Figs, dates, raisins, and blubs are now all showing up in this. That chocolate and tobacco note are more prominent on the mid palate. That barrel bitterness or the bitterness that you get from a dark chocolate really sinks in underneath my tongue. And then that tobacco note kind of hits the back of the palate. The finish on this, I would, I would say is medium to long. And the finishing notes are medium to long because of that bitterness, the chocolate, the tobacco, and that ashy peat is lingering around quite a bit. Tell you what, this is surprising on how much this has really calmed down from the from the first time that I had it, or the first couple of times I had it. I was kind of expecting to come in here and start talking about how young this this tasted, and I'm not getting any youth 
in this at all. So let's give this thing a, a roll in the glass and then give you some brief information on Kilhoman. If you know anything else other than what I'm saying here and you would like to share with the community, do me a favor and let me know in the comments down below. And if you're new here and you're not subscribed, do me a favor and subscribe to the channel. Just go ahead and click on that little subscribe button right there. Turn that bell notification on because I produce videos and release them every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. All right, so Kilhoman. This was the, at the time that it was, that it was established, was one of the first new distilleries on Isla in 124 years. And it was founded by Anthony Wills and his wife, Kathy. It is a family owned and run business. Anthony is the master distiller and also the managing director of the distillery. Kathy Wills runs the visitor center and they have three sons. James, George, and Peter. And based on their website, they're all involved in the distillery with managing the sales and marketing activities, whatever marketing activities means. And one of the marketing things that they have out there is this is a farm to glass distillery. They use all Isla Barley. They have farms surrounding the distillery itself. They do all their labeling, the bottling, the distillation, all there on the property. And if I'm not mistaken, I think they have a malting floor as well. That might be a little bit iffy. Let me know in the comments down below if you know for sure. Now, I mentioned earlier that the very first release of the Lot Gorm was five years old. And I don't know if going forward, each one of these new annual releases are five years old, or if they have older stock and each one is just older and older and older as they release it. Lot Gorm was first released in 2013, and that was the one that I believe they said was five years old. Whether this one is five years old or not, I don't know. If you know anything different, let me know in the comments down below. And that's pretty much all the information that I found on Kilhoman. So leave me some comments down below if you know anything different. Let's see if the water has changed this profile in any way. Get one last nose, one last sip, and move on to the score. All right, this actually brought out a little bit more of the ashy peat note, and I'm getting a lot more red fruit notes, and the dark chocolate has now changed to milk chocolate. It actually became a lot sweeter and more ashy on the nose. It's almost like a vanilla cream soda as well. I tell you what, the water really opened this up and it changed the profile quite a bit. Let's see if that comes through on the palate. Let's get that sip in. Yep, that ashy note is now more of a dominant note. That tobacco is still there. The milk chocolate is now there and not necessarily very bitter on the side of the tongue. The vanilla and the red fruit notes are all still there. It did tone down what I would consider to be the depth that this had without water. I think it kind of shallowed it out a little bit and the notes are not as vibrant or as punchy on the palate with the water. Even though the water did change the profile a little bit, I wouldn't say that it changed the profile for the better. Now you can drink your whiskeys any way that you want. I will never tell you, there's a bug flying around in here. I'll never tell you how to drink your own whiskeys because it's your whiskey, it's not mine. So drink it how you want. Going forward for me, I don't think I would add water to this. And if I do, I probably won't add as much as I did in this review. All right, so the only thing left to do is move on to the score. If you are new to this channel, I score everything out of five stars. And all of my Monday series are a little bit different. This current Monday series is all about peated scotches. So I can't really give this a score based on my previous series on bourbons or Irish whiskeys. It's gotta be a standalone. So everything that I've done in my peated scotch series, I'm gonna rate this up against everything that I've had so far. And of everything that I've had so far, this is ranking up there quite a bit. I like this a lot. I don't think I like it enough to give it a four, but the notes that I originally got, I'm a little shocked again on how much this has calmed down. The flavors that I'm getting added a little bit more depth to this. I don't think it tastes as young as it did when I first opened it. The tobacco, the chocolate, the vanilla, the orange peel, the ashy note, everything is hitting me just right in this review. So I am going to give this 3.95 stars. What do you think? Have you had any of the Kilhoman releases? If so, let me know in the comments down below what you've had. I personally am really looking forward to what Kilhoman is going to do in the future. And speaking of which, in the future, I will be doing a first Friday flight fight with all the different releases that I have of the Kilhoman. 
How many have you had? Which ones do you like the most? Let me know in the comments down below. That's all I got for you, wherever you're at in your journey. I hope you're enjoying it. And until the next time, we'll talk to you later. Bye.